Now, here we are in the coronavirus pandemic of 2020, and lots of musicians have been collaborating online, sending each other data. Yeah, thousands of terabytes of data have crossed the internet lines really in the last couple of months. Now, it used to be, of course, if you recorded on a piece of tape, which was a physical thing, you then had to send the tape in a box by courier or post or whatever to another studio where another musician could then add to it and send you the tape back. Of course, huge, long delays and sending lots of heavy things backwards and forwards. Nowadays, it's all on computer. Now, I've just done a session uh, with a guitarist, a fantastic guitar player and really decent audio engineer. Now, he is a recent, he's kind of been dragged into the computer world because his multitrack machine actually stopped working, a uh, digital multitracker, and he couldn't get it fixed. And he had a computer and I started to help him through the processes of sending recordings to me and then from me back to him. Now, that's thrown up a set of challenges, which I'm going to address now. So let's say we've got, as you can see on the screen here, we've got um, my recording of the Ace of Spades. I did it a little bit differently. You can see those tunes on my, uh, my playlist, A Song A Day During Self-Isolation. Now we've got all of these recordings here and I want to be able to send these to somebody so that they can play a guitar solo over it, but still maybe have the power to do a little bit of editing, maybe create their own mix. So if I if I'm in Logic, for example, now this is not door specific. Indeed, it is not computer specific. The principles of this, which is what I'm going to talk about, are exactly the same. If I want to send a minute of audio at 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, that's seven and a half megabytes. So looking at the size of the files that you're sending is really important because you don't want to send anything compressed. Lots of social media platforms, they compress data. If you send a video to somebody on a message, for example, it'll compress it heavily so that it's not sending lots and lots of data. It's saving your monthly data allowance, for example. But if you're on Wi-Fi, you can use things like Dropbox or WeTransfer or any of those proprietary third party platforms that allow you to send large files, usually up to a few gigabytes before you then have to pay. But if we're dealing with audio, actually, you can still use that platform without necessarily having to pay at all. So if I want to send these individual tracks to somebody, if I'm in Logic, I have to go to File and Export and then all tracks as audio files. For example, I've made a video about this. Now, what I'm gonna do is not do that. I'm gonna deal mostly with what happens at the, really, when you've done this, this bouncing and where you have to send it. Now, I'm going to, uh, for example, I'm just going to uh, export this one, uh, four on the floor as an audio file, one track as audio file. Then a window appears. Now this would be the same whether it's Cubase on a PC or Logic as this is on a Mac, anything. It would be the same principle. I have to work out where I'm going to put it. Half of the problem is files going missing. You think, oh, where did I put it? So you've got to be very, very au fait and very knowledgeable with how basically computers are partitioned. The usual place to put it is on the desktop. So it's visible to you when you look at it on a computer. So usually what you'd have is you'd have all of these options, things like, you know, trim silence, waveform, and you think, oh, okay. Um, I've covered that in another video. So subscribe to my channel and you can see all of those other things as well. I'm gonna put this file on the desktop like that. Now, if you're sending lots of files, it may be a good idea to click the new folder button, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click a new folder on the desktop, which is going to be, uh, I don't know, uh, stems, don't like that word, tracks. Tracks for Bob. So I'm going to put them in that place. Now, when you do that, suddenly the desktop thing disappears, but at the top, you can see tracks for Bob, and that's the folder that it's going to put this in. And then I'm going to click export. It does its thing on logic, exporting track, da, 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 and etc., etc., etc. And there you go. Now I'm going to quit logic. We're just going to hide it, actually. 
And then on the desktop somewhere, where can you find it? I mean, I've got this mess of things here. I'm a bit lax when it comes to this, but a good way to find it is simply to go into the Finder page, go onto Desktop, and then hopefully there's going to be files for Bob somewhere. If you don't, if you can't find it, just go in the search Bob. <laughs> search bar, Bob. There we go. So I'm going to tracks for Bob. There it is. So if you perform a basic search within your folders, you should be able to find your folder tracks for Bob. Now, if I double click on that folder, it will show me that I have a WAV file there for on the floor dot WAV. Now, it's worth keeping an eye, having a look at the size of this thing, 35.6 megabytes. That's about right. I said just now, seven and a half megabyte per track minute for 44 kilohertz, 24 bit, seven and a half. So it's about seven, 15, 30. It's about three minutes, four minutes long. That's about right. It's always of the order of if you see something that says 300 megabytes, you go, really? How did it get that big? Or indeed, if you've accidentally exported it as an MP3 and you don't want to do that, you want to keep everything full quality for the recipient to essentially have the same thing that you have sent them. So 35.6 megabyte and of course today at 11.37 a.m. The date modified is also a really good way of keeping track of what you're doing. Sometimes if you're looking at you think really is this and just look at the clock at the top right 11.39. There you go. That's going to be the folder. Now if I go to uh, Safari for example my internet browser or whatever it is you've got whether it be Google Chrome or Firefox or any of those I'm going to go to wetransfer.com. Uh, so, uh, no thanks. I'm just going to use the proprietary thing. So add your files, add up to two gigabytes. So I'm going to click that, add your files, first of all. And then that same sort of box will come up saying, well, where do you want to look? Desktop uh, tracks for Bob. There it is. Double click on that, and then I'm going to double click on four on the floor. And you can see at the top here, it's added that file. And then I'm going to email it to myself. Email it to myself, just so that I can test this. Uh, message, here's your file. transfer sometimes it will ask you and this is this infuriated my friend who was doing this because he said oh everything has to be very well it's you know in this day and age we have to have those sort of things so if I just go on my uh, email on my phone which I could do on the computer as well an email will arrive giving me a verification code there we go and now when you do that you'll see a progress bar now, if something sends very, very slowly or very, very quickly, that could be an extra alarm bell to say, have I actually sent this thing correctly? Maybe I haven't. So just be very careful with that. Be in my, be, sort of bear in mind your file sizes. Now, 44.1 kilohertz at 24 bit is seven and a half megabytes. If you're still using 16 bit, it'll be two thirds of that size. That is five megabyte per track minute, roughly. If, of course, your sample rate goes up or if you're using videos as well, if you're sending video, that's really important to make sure that you know roughly what you're sending. 1080p off a, an iPhone, for example, is going to use of the order of about 100 megabytes per minute. That's fine, but you need to be aware roughly of the file sizes. Don't worry if it's slightly more or slightly less because things like compression codecs will result in some videos being larger and some videos being smaller for a given time. It depends on the complexity of the video that's been recorded. So you're done. Here we go. OK, so I'm going to go to my email provider now here and then hopefully on here there will be. There we go. Sent you files via WeTransfer. Get your files. Uh, download four on the floor your download has started and then it flings it over to your internet uh, uh, browser and I can see that it's arriving 
quite slowly because I'm at the bottom of the garden and the internet connection is not so good here. That's OK. And then when that's arrived, hopefully it will arrive in the same condition that I sent it in. So we're going to try that just going back into logic. Let's close that down. Close all that. Energy companies wanting more money. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to open up my logic again and import that file so that you can see the export and the import process really via the internet. Of course, all on one machine, but the, it's the same the same, same principle. So uh, for on the floor dot wav, I want to find that. There we go. It's in my downloads folder now. I'm going to put it onto my desktop. Oh, you can hear it playing away there. It sort of opened up in Apple Music. Uh, and uh, I'll just stop that. There we go. So it's just a bass drum at the moment. Now I've moved that file. I dragged it onto the desktop. So if I go to date modified, that will show me the most recent thing that happened for on the floor dot wav. Sometimes when you're finding stuff, if you just go to date modified or date created, it will allow you to see your most recent file without you having to scroll alphabetically or indeed looking for things by size or type or anything like that. Now with this, what am I going to do with this? Well, if I go back into logic now, I'm going to create a new file underneath my four on the floor. I'm going to create an audio file because that's what I've essentially exported. There it is. Now, in order that this is going to bounce correctly or it's going to import correctly, I need to make sure I'm at the beginning of my project because by default, when you send things, when you send a track as an audio file, it will send the track from the very beginning, even if there's no sound there. That's very important because actually it means that it's going to line up. So if I go now to import audio file, it'll bring up the familiar window which says, where do you want to look? Where is it? So if I go to desktop, four on the floor, double click on that, and it will magically appear on my logic file. And as you can see, it lines up with the green thing above it. And there's my file. That's absolutely fine. Now, what happens if things go wrong? What happens if you added a file to we transfer and it didn't go there or suddenly Windows disappeared? Well, everything on a computer really is non-destructive unless you really click delete and move it to the trash, empty the trash. Even then you can still recover if you've got some file recovery software. But everything is non-destructive. So if a window disappears, for example, it could be that you've just clicked back on logic, for example, and it's just hidden the other window. So all is not lost. Don't worry about things like that happening. It's always best to keep backups and to name your folders, name your tracks. As you can see, I've been a bit lax because I've got lots of backing vocal parts here. This is my rather bizarre recording of the Ace of Spades from my lockdown session. Um, you can see that I've not named any of my tracks. It's just called Ace of Spell. Oh, a few of them I've uh, named, but my backing tracks, backing vocals, because there are so many of them, sometimes I just go, oh, I'll just record them and then go, oh, I haven't named them. And when you're looking for, you know, um, audio uh, 23, uh, take three, doesn't mean anything. So it's really handy to name your files. Now with anything uh, based on data, it's always handy to have a physical copy somewhere. Sometimes people, I mean, for the person that I, re you, uh, that I um, collaborated with who had problems with this, he's got a computer in his studio, which is nowhere near his Wi-Fi transmitter. And so he uses a portable hard drive. So the, the principles are exactly the same. If you've got a portable hard drive, you need to see it in your finder window. When you look at this, there should be something else down here with an eject button, for example. I've got this, um, if I just plug a memory card in, for example, into my card reader, I'll plug that in. If you look on the desktop here, there will be an extra place. There we go, H2SD. This is my from my Zoom card. So I could uh, double click on my folder there and you can see all my WAV files. I could drag something onto that card and then take it to my other machine, which has a decent internet connection and do it that way and send things that way. But you've got to be aware of where things are and always to name 
things, if necessary, put it into a new folder with the day's date and even the time of day so that you can retrace every single step that you've made in order to send and receive your files successfully.